So to begin our journey into trigonometry, we're going to start from the very beginning. A rectangular coordinate system. So also called a Cartesian coordinate system where you just put an XY here. And the first thing we're going to do is define this leg to be the initial side. And then we're going to take this side here, this arrow, and we're going to hold it fixed at the center and then rotate the arrow. And we rotate that to some side we then call the terminal side. And then the angle that this sweeps through, we call theta, or some other letter, alpha is common lot, or beta, whatever you want to call it. But theta is commonly used. So we have an xy coordinate system, positive x accessed. We call that the initial side. We rotate that through, and where we stop is the terminal side, and that sweeps through some angle. Now we do have to choose a direction that's positive, just like we choose the x-axis being positive this way. We are going to choose positive in rotations to be counterclockwise. And that's a choice, but this is what's the standard to do. And this also might give some purpose to why the sectors here, the quadrants, are labeled the way they are. So you start in the first quadrant here, you rotate through that, and then you go into quadrant two, and then you go into quadrant three, and then you go into quadrant four. And so we're rotating counterclockwise. And a clockwise rotation is a negative angle then. So a few more names to throw at you here. Now with the XY coordinate system, these perpendicular lines are defined as being 90 degrees there, separation. So an acute angle is an angle that's between 0 and 90 degrees. It'll always be in the first quadrant. If we move our terminal side up a little more, keep rotating it, we get to straight up, which is the right angle. So the right angle is what's 90 degrees. And if we keep rotating this some more, we get to the obtuse angle. So an obtuse angle is when you're greater than 90, between 180, And if we keep moving this a little bit more, we get to the straight angle, which was just a line then, but that's going through 180 degrees then. Let's take a look if our initial side and the terminal side are the same. So we're going to start on the initial side. We're going to rotate all the way through and come back to the initial side again. So these are in the exact same spot. That is then one revolution. We did one revolution then around our circle. 
And there's different ways to measure that. Uh, the most co or one of the common ways is to break this into degrees. So each quadrant is 90 degrees. And there's four quadrants. And so that means a total revolution then of 360 degrees. Another common way that comes from math is radians. And radians are considered the more natural unit for math. And so one revolution in radians is 2 pi. And since these both represent the same thing, it means they equal. And this is where units becomes important here. These words, at least. Because if we took away these words, well, 360 certainly doesn't equal 2 pi. So these words are important. Just like 12 inches equals one foot, you can see that 12 doesn't equal one, but you know 12 inches is one foot. Those words there are important. And so we can take this statement And we can make a few relations from it. So imagine that we're going to divide both sides by 360 degrees. So if we divide both sides by 360 degrees, now the words cancel just like numbers do. So on the left side, that's 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. While on the right side, we'll get 2 pi radians divided by 360 degrees. And this is a conversion factor on how we can convert between radians and degrees. And there's actually another one here. So instead of dividing by 360, we could divide both sides by 2 pi. And if we did that, we'd get this next relation then. And these simplify. So 2 over 360 simplifies to 1 over 180. And same for this one down here, that simplifies. And so here's our simplified results and we use this here to change between degrees and radians so the simple thing to remember here is that degrees always goes with 180 and pi always goes with radians So let's say you have 60 degrees, and we want to convert this to radians. Well, we want to get rid of the word, we want to get rid of this word and change this word to this one. So that means we're going to want degrees in the denominator. I apologize, I'm horrible at writing with my mouse. <laughs> but we want degrees in the denominator so these cancel out. So this tells us which of the changes we want here from the previous slide. We want degrees in the denominator so that cancels this one and then those are gone. 
And then what's left is radians in the numerator, which is what we want. So there we go, the degrees cancel. And then we're left with 60 pi divided by 180. And then the only word remaining is radians. And we can simplify this. So 60 goes into 180 three times to get our final simplified answer. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. So check out this one. What if we had 3 pi over 4 radians? How do we convert that to degrees? Now remember, we want to get rid of the word radians and convert that. To get rid of radians, we divide by radians. And that tells us which to choose. So we'll choose this one then. Because now the radians will divide out. And we'll be left with degrees in the numerator. And in this case, the pies also divide out. And so we're just left with the numbers. 3 times 180 divided by 4. And then that all simplifies to 135 degrees. So check this out for question 1. In the lecture work, 45 degrees is how many radians? Well, we want to get rid of degrees, so we're going to divide by degrees which means we choose this ratio then. So degrees are in the denominator, cancels that one in the numerator. And so we're left with 45 pi divided by 180. And the only word remaining then is radians. And then 45 does go into 180 four times. And so this simplifies then to pi over 4 radian. 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. So how about radians to degrees for question 2 on the lecture work? So we want to get rid of the word radians. So that's what we divide by. And so we'll choose the ratio where radians is in the denominator. And now the word radians cancels out and we're left with degrees. Now again, the pies also divide out because you have one in the numerator and one in the denominator here. And so you're just left with the numbers. 2 times 180 divided by 3. And this simplifies then to 120 degrees. So another topic in this section, some more terminology here, are coterminal angles. 
And a coterminal angle is in any angle that has the same initial side and same terminal. Whatever angles share the same initial and same terminal are coterminal angles. So for instance, let's say this was 30 degrees here. Well, an angle that's coterminal means we start on the same initial. Now we can't do 30 degrees because that one's already taken. So it means we're going to have to go all the way around and come back again. And so here we went 360 degrees because we did one full revolution. And then we did another 30 degrees to get to the same terminal. And so this angle then would be 390. And we can go around as many times as we want. So that was going around once. We could go around twice. So we can do 360, 720, and then another 30 is 750. 750 degrees is coterminal with 30 because it starts on the same initial and ends on the same terminal. Now these are all positive angles I've been drawing. We can also do negative. So let's say we start on the same initial and we rotate negative to the same terminal. Well then that's minus 330 degrees. And that is coterminal with 30. Again, if we wanted, we could rotate around more. So let's say we do one full revolution. So that's minus 360. And then we could go another minus 330. to get a minus 690 degrees. And that would be coterminal. So the last thing the uh, this section throws at you is arc length, which can actually be extremely useful. Um, for this section, it's mostly just used for the word problems, though. And the arc length is the length of the uh, circumference of a circle. Now, the circumference of the circle, you may know as 2 pi r, but that's the full circumference. What if we have our initial side right here, which is radius r, and we rotate through theta degrees, then what is this length? Call that length S. And this length here turns out to be R times theta. So this arc length right here, we'll call it S is the radius times your angle. Now the angle does have to be in radians. There's a couple of word problems where you just use this formula to figure out an arc length. So I want to say in summary here, 
that I'm using this part of the lecture to lay out the ideas. And to see these problems worked out, you should check out the practice video then. So that's where I'll work out all these problems by hand, since I think seeing these problems worked out by hand is, is uh, better for you than seeing me work through a text editor. So remember, if you're not quite happy, hey, we didn't see enough problems, make sure you check out the practice videos to see the problems worked through. So in summary for the ideas of this first section, we have initial and terminal sides. Counterclockwise defines a positive angle. And that seems to feel counterintuitive to people because uh, we're used to the clock rotation. People tend to think that maybe that's the natural way to define positive. But in math, counterclockwise defines a positive angle. And the some four names there for angles, the acute, right, obtuse, and straight. One revolution is 360 degrees, which is also two pi radians. This is very useful because it allows us to convert between degrees and radians. There are coterminal angles, angles that have the same initial and terminal side. Then finally, a quick formula at the end there for arc length. And that is the first video lecture.